This is the About Our Podcast, released September 4th, 2017, episode 358, Mergers and People Acquisitions. to the Amp Hour. I'm Dave Jones from the EEV Blog. And I'm Chris Gamble of Contextual Electronics. And I'm Paul, here to do a response to part of that podcast where they talk about DIY Powerwalls, because I do know something about those. And um, they, uh, in their off-the-cuff conversation, experience some confusion um, about what that term means, the scope of it, and um, and because of that confusion, there's a number of factual errors. Um, and also, Dave is quite um, sceptical about the viability and um, the risks associated with do-it-yourself um, battery creations. So, uh, let's see what they have to say. And I was thinking about that in terms of this. Did you just happen to see this video? Or actually, there's a video, but then also it was a motherboard.vice article about DIY power walls. No. I oh, think man. The These things are great. Like... Yeah, uh, so basically they, they go to recycling centers. Oh, Dave. You gave that about two or three seconds worth of thought. Um, let's see what he's uh, concerned about. So I, this no, they're great ideas. No, 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 no. Do yeah. yourself Powerball is not a, not, not a good idea. No. I mean, yes, there, Come there on, is a potential for danger. Come on, you're an engineer. You understand the thermal and safety implications of something like that. These are all... I would submit that um, non-engineers, um, do-it-yourselfers, people in the maker scene, um, uh, are also capable of understanding the thermal implications and the risk um, associated with this activity. Fire safe boxes. Okay, so yes, there have been a couple oh, of fires. Putting a fire safe box, if it blows up, no worries. You know, sure, right? <laughs> and put it in your garage and, you know, make sure your garage doesn't attach to your house. But Generally, li uh, lithium batteries don't blow up. There are, it's true, many videos on YouTube of people um, working hard to make a lithium battery blow up and videos of people overcharging lithium batteries to the point where they blow up. They don't normally do that. They don't often do that. And there are things you can do to mitigate those risks. Do it yourself as are uh, just as capable of applying those kind of mitigation um, practices as, uh, as any engineer. Anyways, uh, so there was a video, so there's a video, I forget the guy's name, where was it? He's looking for Jehu Garcia. Oh, it was, uh, La, uh, Gar uh, Daniel, uh, no, 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 no. What is his name? Anyways, there's, there's a LinkedIn video with a guy, and he's actually, t uh, he goes over this, it's called my, uh, it's Ye Jehu, Shehu, Yehu, uh, Garcia. Yeah. But anyways, basically, he was working on a DIY power wall, and uh, he went and interviewed a guy who built one, and look, it's huge the, and awesome. Yeah, for the record, I think this is cool, right? I uh, so this is interesting. Um, Dave, if I'm going to uh, guess, then I think Dave thinks this is a cool idea. He's just not convinced that um, punters... Uh, lowly mortals, non-engineers, are capable of doing a good enough job and um, addressing the risks that come along with um, large battery packs. Uh, so, as someone who is involved in the in the scene, uh, I think there is uh, demonstrations of uh, DIY power walls in which the risks have been mitigated professionally, uh, well, in a professional manner, as, as a professional would do, um, and it is possible to do a, a good job. It's also possible to do a bad job, and um, 
one of the things about the DIY powerwalls.com forum is that there's lots of um, people on there who can help you build a better pack. Um, so if you are getting into this um, scene, then there is good advice out there. And there are people knowledgeable in ways of making things uh, safe, safer, and addressing the various risks associated. I do it yourself, power wars, but I, is it a good idea to encourage your average Joe to do well, that? No, are you very? So, uh, Dave doesn't know that there's someone called Average Joe uh, with a YouTube clip, uh, channel doing a really good uh, DIY power wall. Uh, I encourage you to, I'll do a link somewhere um, to his channel. Uh, it's great. Um, so this is the crux of it though, is Dave doesn't like the idea of uh, anybody without um, sufficient thought uh, and experience um, getting into building battery packs. Um, given that the, the DIY Powerwall scene includes uh, anything from a small battery pack of three cells um, in up to 100 kilowatt hours, a monster pack that Daramar's doing, um, what constitutes the Powerwall is a very vague nebulous thing. Um, and that is the source of quite a lot of confusion especially when it's named after a commercial product, the Tesla Powell, um, and it will, that confusion runs throughout this conversation. Bad That's idea. a good question. Right? Yeah. Here it is. Okay, yeah, you're right. I mean, they're, they're just encouraging people to go in and go in out and get in exothermic... Exothermic means uh, batteries can heat up lithium ion cylindrical cells in the thousands and mm. wiring them all in parallel and series yes we are I, like it's just like no i don't know man I with, think with... so i think uh dave is not quite appreciating all the thought and effort that diys are putting into making these good systems uh, all the individual cell fuses the hrc fuses the the cutouts, the BMS monitoring and managing systems, um, and the um, the fact that many people are now just charging to 4.1 volts instead of the 4.2, so we stay away from the danger top level 100% uh, charging zone, and um, so there's quite a few things that you can do to make a DIY power wall. Um, safer and address the known risks. Paper bus bars, come on. I mean, it's just, no, you've got to know what you're doing. That's you do have to know what you're doing, and that's the beauty of YouTube and the DIY Powell's forums, that people who don't know, i.e. beginners, um, who are interested, can um, get started and learn and build something small, and then from there, work their way up, and you can see what other people are doing and how, how they're progressing, and so on. That's, that's just ridiculous. I think there should be some kind of minimum of knowledge, but I don't yeah, know. I, I, think think. It, I think it's awesome. Anyways, yeah, uh, I forget who it was. I met someone in New Zealand who was doing this as well. I forget. I remember Hi. he was... Uh, that was me. ...writing a book about bikes, yes. and he showed this, right. and he actually showed that... So he had a built-in... So each, uh, he had built these 3D printed brackets. There's like a whole community they had 3D printed brackets and stuff. And then yeah. and then it was like a, a grouping of these 18650s. And then each grouping had its own built-in meter, basically, that can, you could monitor. Right. It must have been, they must have been three three in series, because it was like, mm -hmm. wait, no, it must have been just one in series. It must have just been there all parallel. Because I think it was around like three and a half volts, so that would be parallel, right? Oh, well, so. no, series. Three hundred, three, get 300 a, volts, you have no, to series. That's three and a half, three and a half volts. Oh, right. So, yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, three and a half volts would just be a bunch of parallel because it would be like, yes. you know, somewhere between 4.2 and 3 volts, so. That is correct. Yeah. 
So anyway, I don't know. It's interesting, and yes, I would hope people are safe. Uh, you can't protect people from themselves. And it's like, what they're really... well, And so, like, at the end of this video, which was a very good video, it goes all through everything, right? Mm -hmm. But... So they're talking about a video that Jehu did where he interviews, I think it's Mike, at E.D. West, who um, assembled a, a bunch of the Tesla smart car battery modules that they have. So E.D. West is an um, EV conversion company. They'll take an old car and they'll um, rip out the internal combustion uh, engine and put in electric motors and batteries. And as part of their business, they have a whole lot of old Tesla battery model modules that came out of BMW smart cars. And these were built um, three or four, five years ago when BMW wanted um, to do an electric car and they didn't know much about electric, so they contracted Tesla to do all the, the batteries and the um, control systems for the BMW smart cars. Um, so this EV West crowd that's featured in the video that they're talking about um, have a whole bunch of Tesla modules um, from old smart cars. At the end of the video, he kind of adds up the cost. It's about $15,000 for a 30 kilowatt power wall, right? So the $15,000 is actually for the whole system, including the solar array, all the um, cables, the battery modules, um, the metal box, the the um, the inverter, the solar charge controller, um, various other control bits and pieces, fuses, um, and cutouts, and all that kind of all that peripheral stuff that is actually quite expensive. Um, so it's the entire system, not just what you would think of when you talk about a Tesla Powerwall. So a Tesla Powerwall is just the Tesla 2170 modules from the Gigafactory plus a BMS plus an inverter in a box. And so throughout this conversation, Dave seems to be thinking about Tesla Powerwall units and Chris is thinking about this um, this system that's featured in the video, and that that's confusing. Jesus, you can always buy a commercial one for that. Well, you could. Yeah, yeah. May, maybe not that. Capacity, no, it's a twenty. But that's I think it's like a, money. Right, it's like a twenty. It's like fifteen or twenty thousand dollars for like a seven to ten kilowatt hour. So it's like you're getting three times your money. Uh, so Chris is a little bit behind. The Tesla Powerwall One was a 7 kilowatt hour um, system that didn't have an inverter. The Powerwall 2 is basically twice the, the capacity. Uh, it's got 14 kilowatt hours of batteries and they will run it for 13.5 um, kilowatt hours. Uh, but it also has, um, as well as a BMS, it has a inverter built into the box. So it's way better value basically, if you build it yourself. However, I was thinking this as no, I was watching No, no, the, 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 ten, the Tesla Powerwall, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's a 10 kilowatt system and it's only... So Dave is also not quite uh, informed. 10K. Oh, I thought it was more. Okay. I... Uh, These have changed. Yeah, I, I think th they've, they've been upgrading them too, though, so... Right. Okay, uh, well... I don't know. That, that, that's them, like, that's a lot of money to spend on a do-it-yourself recycled... Powerwall, sure, I'm just saying that. So again, Dave's thinking Tesla Powerwall unit, and the video is about the whole system. Um, power, the Tesla Powerwall 2, 13 kilowatt hours, 13 and a half. The system that they're talking about, the 15,000, bought a 33 kilowatt hour battery system, plus the whole array and all the other sundry equipment. Um, so that's a whole system. All right, so here we go. Usable capacity, 13.5 kilowatts, cost, I don't know. Uh, price for power, what? 6,200. That can't be right. Mm. But anyways, I think no matter what you're doing, right, 
you're paying what you're paying a Tesla or another company that does something similar, usually with you know I think they're recycled batteries as well, but you're paying for the assurance that it's not going to blow up. They're tested, they're they're guaranteed, right? If you if it does blow up and we're down your garage, you can go and sue Tesla, right? So it's not just that, but they do the battery management properly, right? Uh, it is possible for a do-it-yourselfer to implement a proper VMS system. And there are lots of good examples of that, um, of people using the Batrium VMS uh, uh, system, which incidentally uh, comes out of, of an Australian crowd. Um, the um, 40 kilowatt hour pack that Peter Matthews of the HB Powell YouTube channel, he's running the Batrium. Garama in Europe, who's got, I think he's working his way towards a hundred kilowatt hours. Um, he's running the the battery system. Um, so um, those it's a the beam, the battery system is a really good system, and there's other people using um, other VMS uh, arrangements. Um, so it's possible to do it as a do it yourselfer, and uh, still still have a good. Um, a good solution. To ensure that you get optimum life out of this thing, yeah, it may work now, but this thing may be completely cactus in three, four years' time. Sure, right? I, I think. Um, well, if you do it yourself and you notice that one of your groups is fading, is sagging, then what you do is you pull that group out, you uh, build, either build up a new group or you take one that spare that you've already built and you slap it in your power wall and in your system and uh, away you go. And so for example, Peter Matthews, HP Powerwall, he's got um, groups sitting ready to go. If one of his, what's he got? He's got um, 14, I think he's got 20, 28 groups running at the moment to, to build his 40 kilowatt hour system. Uh, if one of those groups failed um, catastrophically, the VMS would alert him and he would pull it out and um, grab one of the spare ones he's got on his bench and slap it in and away he'd go. Uh, if you bought a commercial system that was well engineered um, and has all those guarantees, you have to call for a repair person and you have to wait for them to come, and you have to arrange for them to deal with it. Um, they might have to um, call for uh, extra parts. Uh, there could be expense and delay. Uh, it's no longer under your control. So the, the power and virtue of doing it yourself um, is that you can do it yourself. You can, you can manage all the complications. People that are, the people well, that are really building right grand, now. So, it's not. so again, uh, the 15 grand is not for the battery, it's for the whole system. So if the batteries, so for example in EV West, if one of his uh, modules died, he would pull it out, he would come along with a replacement that he's got on his stock, uh, stock shelves, and he would put in a replacement, uh, and then you turn it back on and um, away you go. It'll be better value to buy the commercial one uh, that's properly that. engineered to keep going. I don't. So I'm kind of surprised that Dave does not appreciate the idea of people building electronic stuff themselves. Um, that's not an approach, a, a, um, a philosophical standpoint I would have guessed coming from from someone whose livelihood basically exists of um, describing to other people how to do electronic stuff and how to play with electronics um, themselves. Exactly. Looks like it's only 6,200 6, it says on here. So yeah, It's a good deal. Interesting. David. All right, the, um, the other issue with the, the price of real Tesla Powerwalls is the um, Tesla is still um, production constrained. So although the price is great, 
and there's lots of people signed up to buy it, um, it's quite hard to actually get them at this, at this point in time. That will change, um, so it will get easier. Screaming at me, cost of time. Cost of time Sure, as well. right. And that's so this is another surprising thing to come from, uh, uh, in this case, David Tu, who uh, works with David Jones. Um, uh, having watched a lot of uh, the EEV blog and listened to a lot of the Empower, I happen to know that David Tu built himself a 3D printer. He, he did it himself. He, um, and he built the gantry, he designed all the, the bits and pieces, he sourced all the motors, and he designed the control board. He didn't buy a commercial, um, professionally designed unit. He, uh, he designed that from scratch himself and programmed it himself. And I suspect that took quite a lot of time. And I don't know if anybody was um, commenting, um, asking him, what about your cost of time, dude? You shouldn't be playing around with um, wasting your time uh, doing all this stuff yourself. You should be just buying units. Buy a, an Ultimate um, 3, 3D printer and you're done. Um, what about your cost of time? Similarly, David uh, Jones um, has worked on um, his micropower supply over many years and he's done a series of videos on that and he's about to revisit it. That, um, that is another project that he's doing because he enjoys doing it. Uh, it uh, probably doesn't make much um, financial sense in terms of his cost of time because he's already spent oodles of time on it and hasn't got much to show for it. Um, so uh, it's surprising to me that he would be criticising people who are enthusiastically um, doing by learning, um, doing electronics related things um, themselves. Uh, it's kind of a, a learning process whereby uh, you learn electronics in the context of uh, situations where you need it. It's kind of a contextual electronics activity, this DIY power stuff. The reason that most people probably yeah. aren't doing it like that. And tell that David guy, man, what, what is he, like a backseat driver here? What is this thing? He's a backseat driver. On he's the exa Italian. exactly half the conversation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Anyway, there's a hilarious photo of the guy, I presume it's the guy's uh, boot of his car. Yeah. Um, sorry, trunk for you, Yanks. Oh, yeah, um, thank, thank you. Of, oh, my goodness. Full of, <laughs> full of these uh, lithium-ion battery packs just, like, tossed in there. I would, like, and, sorry, but half of me just, like, well, a small part of me just wants them to catch on fire because that would be funny. <laughs> <sighs> so one of the good things about all these YouTube channels um, looking at lithium-ion batteries and opening laptop batteries um, and the whole um, forum and so on is that we're building up quite a good body of real-world experience dealing with uh, laptop batteries and what that real-world experience is telling us is that the, the laptop batteries are quite robust. Um, they're damn hard to open sometimes. If you're lucky they're, they're, um, they'll pop open, but normally they require quite a bit of um, muscle. Um, but you can throw them in a box and they'll be fine. Um, there's an awful lot of uh, experience that proves that to be the case. So Dave's um, Dave's not aware of the reality um, of the situation in this case. Sorry. Well, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I'm totally not nice, am I? It's just like, you know. Well, either way. Uh, yeah, I, th th this article calls it out that it is dangerous. So, yeah, I mean, like, right. Yeah, yeah, it's a risk, but I so, mean, they, but we also on, talk to people that are yeah, regularly, you okay, know, doing this type of stuff. Okay, there's a couple of people doing this. So you yeah. made it out when you brought this topic up. You made no. it out that all oh, people are all starting to do their own do-it-yourself power. I did not say that. Let's... He didn't say that. Let's take well, back, please. Well, that's you. Yeah. I was actually... uh, at the risk of being picky, uh, I will suggest that there is sometimes, sometimes, a dynamic on the empire between Chris and Dave in which... Chris will raise from the list of things that they've got to talk about uh, 
some new product or way of doing things uh, that he thinks is interesting um, and has potential. Um, and Dave uh, sometimes will slip into um, grumpy old engineer mode where all he can think of is the ways in which this new thing could or would go wrong. And, um, and sometimes he'll get himself up into a head of steam and he'll, he'll make a proclamation about, uh, I'm calling it now, it'll never work. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe this is one of those, one of those times. Surprise, though. I was surprised that the battery stack, so it's, I think, you know, you pinpointed the danger is probably the, you know, inst if there's any instability in the cells or if they, you know, one of them fails and, and blows up, whatever, right? So Chris doesn't know about how we do cell level fusing in order to try and address the, the potential for a single cell to, to go bad. Um, and he doesn't know about all the other safety things that we do to try to mitigate um, the, the various risks associated, associated with doing these large battery packs. That would be from charging it improperly. But I was surprised that... And he also doesn't know that quite a few of us now only charge to 4.1 volts or even lower so that we never get to the, um, the danger zone beyond 4.2. And uh, the other benefit of only charging up to 4.1 volts is you greatly increase the number of cycles that you can get out of the cells. Um, so there are, there are quite a few things that the do-it-yourself uh, community knows about and has um, tricks and techniques for dealing with. Stack-up voltages. They only did like 60 volt stack-ups. So that's partly because there are, there's lots of equipment that you can get for 12 volts, 24 volts and 48 volts. And so if you wanted to do something cheaply, 48 volts or 24 volts uh, is a good way to go to get inverters. And um, the other thing is, in many um, jurisdictions, there's legislation for mains voltage um, stuff, high voltage above 100 volts, and you've got to be a qualified person and the, the risks are, are quite significant. And then there's much more um, leeway given to things that run under 50 volts. And in some places, the, the cutoff threshold between um, you need a professional to, to handle it versus um, it's fine to play with yourself is 60 volts and sometimes higher. Um, but certainly below 50 volts, in most places around the world, you are much freer in terms of legislation to play with stuff yourself. At least in that one video that I watched. I would have expected it was like an electric vehicle where it's like you're, you know, you're and, trying to... And, and remember, you're also still connected to the mains, right? So the well, mains can handle the Well, this one was showing that they actually didn't need to be. That was pretty impressive. No, like, they didn't need to be, but in theory, you know, you could take... No, no, they, well, they were also talking about, well, this is another, another one where like, well, you even don't have to get it. Another thing that Chris and Dave don't know about is that a lot of people in the DIY Powerwall community are building um, two or three or four kilowatt hour packs which uh, they are using to run a shed. Um, so lights and small, small devices in, a, in their, their workshop um, or their garage, uh, which is quite a good application of a small solar battery um, scenario and because they're makers and tinkerers and, and whatever they, um, they are happy to spend the time and learn how to do this stuff because we're interested in electronics. Expected now because you're not connected into the mains. <laughs> so they're right. talking about making it portable right so they, could, they, right. Had, they had portable uh, cells on the roof and then this this installation they had, so they didn't need to get it inspected by the city because 
they yeah, weren't. Yeah, that, that's the other thing. I'm debating whether or not this would even be legal in my country. Uh, and uh, so Dave doesn't know about um, Peter Matthews and his whole system, which has been um, commissioned by a registered electrician, and it's all to code and spec and signed off and so on. Um, yes. To actually do a do-it-yourself pack that is ultimately connected to the grid, even though it is connected through an approved inverter. Yeah, so you don't have to have the system connected to the grid to, to have some useful uh, device, power wall system uh, that you, you've built. You can just use it in the shed. Um, it is nice to have it connected to the rest of your house, but it's not, not necessary. Right, 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 right. Something that actually you does know, the brokering like, of, of like yeah. where the power is flowing. You, and you know, it's it's probably legal if you could find somebody to sign off on it. Yeah. <laughs> right. But uh, that's that's a problem. Finding yeah, someone willing to sign. Actually, it's not much of a problem. Oh, oh, man, you do it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> no one's going to do it, right? No. It's going to sign off, and you do it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like you can you can design and build your own car. Right, mm -hmm. and then try and get it registered to go on the road, but try to find somebody who will register your complete car built from scratch. Good luck, you know. Funnily enough, there is, um, in, certainly in New Zealand, there's a process for um, converting uh, cars to electric and then getting them certified. There's a whole process for doing that. Um, it's not entirely straightforward, it takes some effort, uh, but Doable. Like, yeah. It's, yeah, it's possible, but mm, it's not going to be easy. Is he saying that you shouldn't do stuff yourself because they're not easy? So, anyway, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doubting the viability of this. Well, like, I think over it, time it's just you're going to get more. I, I think this is. Uh, again, I. I'm kind of surprised. So previously he said that he, he, he thinks this is cool, but um, doubting the viability, we know from experience that you can practically, really, build a system um, 33 kilowatt hours or 40 kilowatt hours um, and implement it with um, safety and monitoring and so on. So it's all um, practically doable. And um, so I think mostly he just doesn't know um, anything about what's been happening. It started as like a play for, oh, well, for the equivalent cost of a power wall, it's worth it to spend the time. I'm guessing over time, as this gets more popular, sure. Um, partly it started as a desire to add batteries to solar systems and um, looking for ways to do that cheaply and these days you can either get lots of lead acid batteries which are um, problematic uh, or you can recycle a whole lot of uh, cheap unused potential from, uh, no pun intended, uh, from uh, laptop batteries uh, or, um, or other used battery sources. I mean like like I said it was I looked at the price mm. on the power wall thing, sixty two hundred for a thirteen kilowatt solution. So it's there already it's not a complete solution, it's a a Tesla power wall pack, which as I as I've said earlier, is just the battery, BMS and inverter. The rest of the system you have to um uh add separately. 6,200 for 13 kilowatts, right? right? So yep. three times that, and you're already kind of you at the same yep. thing. So, yeah. So maybe it was just that moment in time, and maybe there's just interest in it. Yep. I'm guessing, yeah, over time. I think the crazy thing is just as, you know, as solar keeps getting cheaper, which obviously it is, um, and as more and more batteries roll out, right? So obviously, I think yep. a lot of this stuff will, I think a lot of the Powerwall stuff is actually recycled and certified. So, yeah. Chris and Dave are confusing each other here. The video that Chris is referencing is, is using re, reusing Tesla modules out of smart cars 
and um, Dave is talking about Tesla Powerwall 2, which contains cells from the um, Tesla uh, Gigafactory, which are brand new 2170s. Uh, but, you know, obviously... I, I believe they're recycled. I believe they're brand new, straight from the uh, factory. You think? Yeah. All right, I think well, they, they are. I've option. never heard of them being second. Yeah. Uh, used cells, I've never heard of that. Uh, Dave hasn't heard about the BMW power pack systems where they are using their old Tesla modules from their smart cars uh, in, in order to build up a reasonable sized power pack in a small container, um, shipping container, which they run in conjunction with their electric car charging um, systems. Uh, so there's a, a funny merry-go-round there between BMW and Tesla. Oh, I think they were. I don't think they are. I think you're... Yeah, you clutch them mm. there. Anyway, Australia's yeah. going to get the biggest uh, Tesla battery pack in the world soon. I... Uh, then they go on to talk about the 100 megawatt Tesla power pack system that's going into South Australia. Um, but, uh, yeah, there was lots of confusion there because the DIY Powerwall scene uh, can mean anything from three cells strung together up to a 100 kilowatt hour system that Dharma is building in Europe. Um, and it can mean the whole system, including solar panels, or it can just mean um, just the batteries uh, and a Tesla. Powerwall, Powerwall with a capital P um, is batteries, BMS and inverter. Um, so, oodles of confusion there. Um, I hope I have clarified some things. Uh, I'm really hoping that Dave will be able to um, come round to the do-it-yourself uh, ethos. It will be interesting to see what happens with Dave's restoration of the Sinclair C5 electric vehicle he has because when he got it it had lead acid gel batteries and if he replaced those with lithium cells uh, he could get a lot more bang for his buck and um, lithium is way better for electric vehicles um, in terms of energy per kilogram which is quite important uh, and if he built the battery pack himself, he would learn heaps. Uh, it would make some great videos on the EEV blog. And um, we can compare notes between uh, what a real engineer does um, when they're building a, a lithium ion pack and what, what us humble do-it-yourselfers do. Um, so we shall see. All right. Well, thanks for watching and uh, catch you next time. Cheers.